What's up everyone, today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how I edit all my photos in Lightroom and Photoshop and I'm just going to play around, just do like a different sort of video today and sort of like show you guys my workflow and everything, how I edit, how I do photos and everything like that, so we'll jump straight in. So the first thing I do is I make a folder with the date and then just like a little description of it so we go into there I just import all the photos in straight away and then I do I make folders so you can see here the last number is 674 so for example this one here is 673 I make a folder I put the original image straight in and then I do the edit and then I put the edit straight in next to it and that's it there for this image so you can see I've already done a few already but this one here is the one I'm up to now I normally just do them in order so right click that I go open with other put it straight into Lightroom Classic that's what I use some people might use Lightroom like the original Lightroom but I use Photoshop Lightroom Classic, which is Lightroom C. I normally make a few desktops and just drag like the finder windows and everything straight there. I already have this imported in Lightroom, but I'm just going to reset it. Just to show you guys, I'm going to remove the photo and just remove. So we go straight to here, right click, open with other, straight into Lightroom Classic. That'll pop up like this. You go import in the bottom right corner that's imported now now straight over to develop so what I do now is I would go command shift F to make it full screen I open this tab at the side straight up with all the editing and normally just leave everything else down now if you're a Mac user like I am I do a few things first before I start editing one of them is right here on the touch bar I turn the brightness all the way up and then the second thing I do is open up notification center and you want to make sure night shift is turned off because that makes the colors a little bit more orange at night sometimes it turns on at 8 p.m. which is the default setting I'm pretty sure but some people might have that changed so I normally just switch it off if I'm editing past that time. Now the first thing I do here would turn the exposure up just to have a look at the image. As you can see it's a little bit grainy because we have it on 800 ISO. I just play around with the exposure a little bit. Might turn it up a bit like that. And then I'm going to grab a graduator filter. I'm going to drag it down. I don't really know how they work so I just turn the exposure all the way up to see which side is the light side and then you can spin that around the right way. I'll drag it down here, put that to about there just under the mask and now I normally make sure this line is just under the bottom of the image. So now I'm going to turn that exposure back down. As you can see, if you have it up too far, you get the dead pixels in here, all the different colored pixels. So you want to drag it down to avoid that. About the only thing I do with the graduator filters are the exposure and the highlights. I'll turn the highlights off. Again, you can see those dead pixels there, so you want to try and adjust it enough to avoid that. Sometimes the shadows, yeah. Shadows as well, but that's going to bring in more dead pixels. What I've done with a few of my last ones of these, I had dead pixels like that, but I just had a few and I ended up leaving it. And then I just used the brush tool in Photoshop and painted straight over. Now I'd go back to the original settings, 
play around with the exposure first. Play around with the highlights a little bit. I bring the shadows up, but then that's going to make it all grainy at the bottom. So we're going to leave that. I think for this photo I'm just going to bring the exposure up enough to see my hands around this part and maybe a little bit of the hoodie. Maybe around there. See if I can bring highlights up. Play around with them. Exposure up a little bit more. Now after that I'd normally play around with the temperature after doing the exposure and everything so I think I'm just going to leave it how it was so I'll press the undo button on my last few of these I've done I didn't really do much with the contrast I only put about plus 11 or plus 12 on so I want to do the same on this one. And then with the vibrance and exposure, the vibrance and saturation, I normally go about, normally about between five and 10 on the vibrance, and then maybe about plus two or three on the satura saturization. Now here we have the HSL color. First thing I do is play around with the blues to get the right sort of tone of blue because the photo looks a little bit different in color to the mask in real life. So I'd play around, try and get the same sort of color, which is about that. Now play around with the saturation that doesn't really change much so I'm just going to put that back to zero now with the luminance I normally turn the luminance down a bit because on the normal settings up here I normally have the highlights down but on this time I have them up Gonna leave it about plus seven so you can see the bottom of the hoodie and like the hoodie strings around here. I might even bring the exposure up a little bit more so you can see my hands a little bit better. Now we'll go back to the luminance. We'll have a look what it's like. I'm going to put it at about minus 3 because it brings out the mask, it doesn't look too bright. I don't normally worry about the split toning section so we'll go straight to the detail. I'll click on this straight away and I'll go over normally between the mask and the hoodie because you can see the grain around here. With the sharpening, I normally have it down, but I'll play around with it and see what I like. We'll leave it about there at 45. I don't normally worry about anything else I just go for the amount on the sharpening so now for noise reduction for the noise reduction I normally don't like putting too much on like I do as least as possible just to reduce it a little bit but not too much 
I'll leave all these lens corrections, we don't need that. Transform, skip past that, and effects. For the vignette, I normally, on my other types of photos like this, it was a lot brighter around the hoodie, so I put a vignette on it just to have like a little fade, a fade to black down here, but we don't really need one on this image because of because you can't see the bottom of the hoodie too much so I'll just leave it there and grain we don't want any more than we already have so that's about that for that image I'll go export I just export straight to desktop so I'll export now I'll go straight back to my desktop that's my 685 folder there, that's the original image, and now this is the edited image. I'll drag that straight there. So now we've got the raw original and the JPEG edited version that we can use pretty much anywhere. So I'll probably post some like these on my Instagram. If you don't follow me already, follow me at JakeX Visuals to see them. Now that's the original and that's the edited. As you can see we haven't really done too much other than bump up the blues a little bit and the exposure. Now as you can see I was an idiot and I forgot to tuck in the cord from the mask into my hoodie. I ended up doing it about halfway through so most of the photos are all good but these are like the earlier ones so we've got the cord right there so what I'll do now I'll right click and open with Photoshop we might make another desktop drag the finder window across to here now Photoshop's open In Photoshop, I normally do all my cropping and everything. As you can see on, I think this one, yeah. So that was the original. This was the edited. And then after in Photoshop, I cropped it into a portrait, like for a phone background. And then into a square for my Instagram. So now the first thing I'll do is I'll go back to original ratio. I'll crop that in a little bit, not too much because I don't want to lose quality. But I'll center the mask about there for center. And now I'll just spot remove this. That's the wrong tool. Spot healing. Straight over that. And now I'll zoom right in here. I normally just use spot remove for this. There's probably other ways you can do it, but I just play around until I sort of get what I like. leave that there that one's done and now for the strings here I go to the healing brush tool I think it is yeah and now we option click about I done about here and now you should be able to just make the brush size that and now you can paint straight up. Mess that one up. I might change source point to up here. And now we should be able to go straight down like that. here again. 
Then I'll change it maybe to here, and then I'll go up. Now for the last little part, I'll change it to here and go down that. Might leave it at that. I think that's about it. And that's about that for that image. So I'm going to export this. I'm going to go export as JPEG quality 100 by cubic automatic and then convert to sRGB we go export I'll go straight to desktop save and now we can go back to here put that straight in I'm gonna go keep both I might do 16.9, change it like this, and I'll center, center the mask, we'll export that, I normally use these ones for foam backgrounds or something like that. Same settings, just go straight to export, to desktop again. I normally name it like underscore one or something, but I'll name underscore two. I'll name this underscore one. That's that, that's that photo done. Now I might go to a square. I'll have to undo back to the original. I'll go square. Center that once again. And now export, export as. I'll go underscore three this time. Drag that straight into there. And now, these are the photos we have out of the edit. So we have the original raw file straight from the camera. Then we have the JPEG, which is the first edit, still with the cord there, straight from Lightroom. Then we have the Photoshopped edit with the cord out. And then we have the portrait one cropped in and the square. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it for this tutorial. Next weekend, I'm going to be doing like a photo shoot tutorial. Going to be going out with a friend or two with a mask and everything because it's October. I'll try and get that out before Halloween as soon as I can after next weekend. So. I'm not too sure what I'm going to upload this week, but it will probably be something to do with skateboards because yesterday I ended up getting a skateboard. I started riding them with friends and everything. I normally take it as well as my scooter to the skate park, so I might get some GoPro clips on them or film some friends doing tricks and stuff like that. So might end up getting a pretty cool video out of that, something different for you guys, and then Next weekend will be the Purge Marks photo shoot video. And then I'll do another editing tutorial like this with like my workflow and everything, what I do. How I import them, how I use Lightroom, Photoshop, everything like that. And then I'll edit a few of those and then you guys will be able to see the rest on my Instagram. So again, thank you all for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed it, drop a comment down below, and make sure you subscribe and turn on that bell 
so you don't miss any new videos and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.